Hi, Helen from crystalsandcrochet.com here and welcome to part 8, the final part of the Floralia Cow designed by Emma from Pippin Poppycock. Okay, hope you enjoy this final part. Okay, so round 81. Um, at the end of part 7 we joined with a slip stitch. What I'm going to suggest you do is just undo that and slip stitch in the front loop only of that first half double crochet. Okay, because what we are going to do now, as we've done previously, is we are going to slip stitch in the front loop only of every stitch. Okay? So exactly the same as we've done before with next to no tension or go up half a hook size if you find that easier. Just a slip stitch in every front loop all the way round. So that's why you've got your two corner stitch markers in the back loops of the stitches okay because you can just sail straight on past those okay so all the way round with a front loop slip stitch in every single stitch when you come round to the beginning you can just join with a slip stitch, but I'm actually going to suggest that you cut your yarn and fasten off because it will be much easier to start in the back loops with new stitches, okay? Because otherwise, you're going to have a chain one crossing and it can be quite difficult to work out exactly where you're going, okay? So once you come all the way round to the beginning there, just fasten off and just leave the ends on the front of your work. So again, if you find it easier, just pop a stitch marker in that first slip stitch, okay? That was our joining slip stitch. No, sorry, that one. Okay, just pop a marker in there and then as you work around it makes it easy to just work into the front loops and it will be much easier working into these back loops for the next round. Okay, okay. before we move on to round 82, let's just talk quickly about this corner. You've got your stitch markers in the back loop, sorry everything pinging in the background there, uh, the back loop in your stitch markers of your two corner stitches, okay if we look here there's the two corner stitches and then all of this is actually only one stitch because down here we slip stitched into the corner and then we made a chain one. So find that stitch there and pop a stitch marker into the back loop okay so that you know that that is the last stitch before that corner so I'm actually going to start here because it sort of makes sense to do this okay so for round 82 we are going to start in, we're going to be working in all of the free back loops behind the slip stitches we've just made. So this is as we've done previously. Um, we'll pick up the third loop for stability and move your stitch markers up as you work the stitches and make sure that you're back to your four millimeter hook. So we're going to start in the first back loop of any corner. So that's our first stitch marker 
here and we are going to be making back loop single crochets okay so back loop and third loop okay and they're quite easy to find this time um, because we've done half double crochet so the third loop is easier to find than it was when we were back down here working into single crochets okay and we are going to back loop single in every stitch so again just come down through that next stitch pop your stitch marker back in okay so you've got your two corner stitch markers there and then once you come all the way round that's the very last stitch you're going to work into where you've put that extra stitch marker and you're then going to join to this first standing single okay so that you don't end up adding an extra stitch in here anywhere that's the best way to do it okay and it's literally just a back loop single so if you just tilt your work forward slightly you'll easily see the back loop and you'll easily go down into that third loop okay so it's just back loop single crochets all the way around as you get to your corners move your stitch markers up so that they are in the two corner stitches come all the way round okay so we've got exactly the same as we've done before come all the way round make your last stitch where you've put that extra marker and then join to that standing stitch and fasten off. If you decided not to cut your yarn and you've made a chain one and all the rest of it, you will have even more in here that you could make a mistake with. Okay, so if you have joined with a slip stitch and done a chain one and then gone in here, do make sure that you still have those two stitch markers in place so that you don't end up making any extra stitches. Okay, round 83. Okay, we're gonna start in the first marked stitch of any corner with a three double crochet cluster. Okay, so you can um, join with a slip stitch and chain two um, but I always like to do mine as I would a standing double crochet okay so into the first mark stitch yarn over pull up a loop you've now got three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through two and let's have the stitch marker out okay so that's our first partial double crochet and we need to make three of those so again yarn over into the stitch pull up a loop yarn over through two yarn over into the same stitch pull up a loop yarn over through two and you've now got four loops on your hook if you do start with a chain start you'll only have three okay yarn over, pull through all of the loops. I'm just going to zoom out a teeny bit, there we go, okay. And we're then going to chain two and make another three double crochet cluster in the next marked stitch, so in the second one. Okay, so exactly the same we make three partial double crochets like we have been doing earlier on in the pattern okay so that's your corner three double crochet cluster chain two and then in the next stitch three double crochet cluster so that's in first and second marked stitch okay we are then going to chain two and 
make a three double crochet together. Again, we've done this before. So yarn over into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over through two. Yarn over into the next stitch, pull up a loop, through two. Next stitch, through two. Okay, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four. Okay, so that's three together. Chain two. And you're going to repeat that all the way across. So in your two marked stitches, in the first one, you make a three double crochet cluster. You then chain two and you make a three double crochet cluster in the second marked stitch. You then chain two and double crochet three together over the next three stitches all the way across. It's actually 69 times. Okay, so you'll have 69 three double crochet together, 70 chain two spaces, and two three double crochet clusters. Okay, so go ahead and do that all the way around. And when you come back here, don't forget that last chain two before you join to the cluster made in that first marked stitch and then fasten off. Okay, round 84. Then we're going to start in any chain two corner space and we're going to start with a V stitch. So standing double crochet. chain one and double crochet. Okay, we're then going to chain three and make another V stitch. So that's double crochet, chain one, double crochet for the V stitch. Okay, so each of your corners is going to be V stitch, Let's have a bit of light on the side, that's better. V stitch, chain three, V stitch. Okay. And then we're going to V stitch in each chain two space to the next corner. Okay. So you're only working into the chain two spaces, making V stitches. Chain one, double crochet, okay, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Okay, so nice simple repeat, we've done this before as well. Corners, V stitch, chain three, V stitch, and then a V stitch in each chain two space all the way across. So you're going to have a total of 72 V-stitches per side. Once you've worked your way all the way round and you make your last V-stitch here, join to this standing double crochet and fasten off. Okay, round 85. Turn your work over so that the wrong side is facing you because we are about to make more bubbles. Starting in any chain three corner space, we're going to make a bobble, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, bobble, single crochet. Okay, so just to remind yourself, I would definitely say keep checking um, the pattern, keep looking at PDF because it's going to be quite easy to miss out one of those singles that we're going to do in there. Okay, so we're going to start with our bobble. So that's a double crochet, five, a five double crochet cluster. Okay, so again, start as if you're going to make a standing double crochet 
and just pull through two loops, okay? And now five times. So we've got one there, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so you've got six loops on your hook, yarn over through all of them and then squish that right up into the corner of that chain three space. We're then going to single crochet, chain two and you're going to pop a marker in that chain two space. Then I'm going to single crochet again and we're going to make another bobble. Okay, one, two, three, four, and five. Six loops on the hook, all the way through all of them. Again, just squish it over a little bit and then make a final single crochet. And remember, like before, allow that top loop or the closing part of your bobble to stretch so that it's almost the size of two stitches. Otherwise your work will go all wobbly and puckered again. Okay, and we're then going to bobble stitch and single crochet in each V-stitch. Okay, so one, two, three, four and five. and single. Okay, let's just stop the hook from squeaking because my hands are warm. Okay, so all the way across, bobble, single crochet into each V-stitch and then your corners are bobble, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, bobble, single crochet. Okay, so like I said, just keep checking the pattern to make sure when you get to those corners that you're getting oops, the right number of singles and bobbles and everything in there. Okay, so bobble, single crochet in each V-stitch and the corners as I've already said. Once you come all the way round and you've made that last bobble and single crochet in this last V-stitch, join to that first bobble and fasten off. Okay, round 86, make sure that you turn your work over so that the right side is facing you. So all your bobbles will be sitting on top. Okay, and in this round you're going to work in the gaps in between um, the bobbles. And we're going to start in any chain two corner space with eight double crochet. Okay, so we've got standing one, so that's one, two, three. Five, let's take that marker out of the way. Six. Oh, squeaky hook, seven and eight. Okay. So eight double crochet in each chain two corner space, then you're going to skip the bubble 
and single crochet in between and then eight double crochet between the next two. How many have we got there? One, two, four, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and then single crochet. Okay, so you're going to carry on like that all the way round. So you've got eight double crochet fan in each corner. Then it's single crochet, eight double crochet, single crochet, eight double crochet, all the way around. You're going to finish with a single crochet in here between these last two bobbles. Join to the corner fan and fasten off. And round 87, our final round. Okay, you're going to start in the first double crochet of any corner fan and single crochet in four. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Then we're going to make a pico. Now, the way that I make mine is to chain three and then rather than going into the first chain come down through the front loop hang on let me zoom right in so that you can see this really clearly okay come down through the front loop and then in through the side loop of the stitch and slip stitch. Okay, and then single crochet in the next four. Okay, so you can see it actually makes the pico sit completely straight. Let me just do a couple more of them and then you will see. Okay, so we're then going to single crochet over the single crochet that we've already made. So essentially this is like a long single crochet or spike stitch. So you're going to go down into that space, grab a loop from the back, pull up to the height of your current round and finish off your single crochet. Okay. And then again, single crochet in four. And make another pico. Okay, so chain three. And then come down to first loop, or front loop rather, and side loop of the stitch through all three. Single crochet in four. And single crochet over the next single crochet. Okay, so that's the effect that we're getting. I'm just going to do a couple more and then I'll come okay, back so to you. now you can see the effect and you can see that this way of doing the picots makes them sit directly sort of straight up. If you join into the first chain what tends to happen is they tend to come over to the side and split those stitches apart. So this is what I call my perfect picots and it keeps them much much neater. Okay, so let me just show you once more. Let me do, whoops, wrong way. 
zoom in a bit more. So we're going to make a single crochet over the single crochet so you come down into the same space, pull up the loop from behind and single crochet and then one, two, three, four, chain three through front loop and side loop of the stitch so that you're in the middle of the V of the two top loops and then slip stitch, single crochet in four. Okay, simple as that, all the way around once you come all the way round to the beginning here and you've made that last single crochet over this last single crochet, join to that first standing single crochet that you did, fasten off and work all of your ends away. Up to you if you choose to block your finished blanket. Um, I always prefer to block purely because I feel it then makes something look handmade rather than homemade. Okay, so it just gives it a little bit of a more polished finish. And with um, acrylic yarn, all you need to do is lay it out on a flat surface. It could be a bed or the floor, whatever. And just starting in the middle with a hairdryer, just gradually work your way out, pressing on the blanket as you do it to make sure that the heat is getting right into the yarn. If you need to, when you come to this bit in particular, just push slightly to open it out, but don't overstretch it, okay? Just push, because all you're doing when you're blocking is setting stitches in place and with acrylic, because it's a man-made fibre, essentially a plastic, it needs heat to set it. Once you've done that, doesn't matter how many times you wash it, it will retain the shape. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed making your Floralia Cal, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.